きすいのはほプリズムパワーメイクアップオッドレディー Welcome to Shoujo and Tell, where we discuss shoujo manga and tell who's hot and who's not, talk about themes, and just generally geek out. Today, August 25th, 2019, we'll be shoujo and telling about the series A Silent Voice by Yoshitoki Oima. This is, in fact, not a shoujo manga. It's our first shonen exception. I'm your host, Ashley McDonald, and I'm joined by Kimlin Tran. Hi, Kimlin. Hi, Ashley.、Yee. Okay. Yay. <laughs> so, <laughs> Kimlin, who are you? I'm a voice actress. I usually voice act for video games, but I've also voice acted for anime like Beyblade vs. Turbo. Um, Rising of the Shield Hero and soon to be released in like what two days? Two days,、oh. yes, in two days would be、um, Cells at Work. So I worked in, yeah, anime. Yay. Wow, <laughs> nobody's ever heard of those anime. Just kidding. Yes, no、definitely... <laughs> <laughs> Cells at Work. I haven't watched Cells at Work yet, but that's definitely one I've been meaning to watch. So there we go. <laughs> Same. It's sort of like、um, all those technological terms will probably be easier for me to absorb and consume once it's dubbed as opposed to reading like a block of、um, oh, words、yeah. on screen. <laughs> like a million translation notes. It's just like the whole screen is just words. <laughs> like, cool. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So I saw on Twitter that you were a big Silent Voice fan. So could you give a brief plot synopsis without spoiling too much? Without spoiling too much. Okay,、yeah. this one will be a little tricky, but I'll try my best. <laughs> okay. See, once upon a time, there's this kid, Shoya, little brat. He just doesn't want to deal with boredom. He was just trying to get through his summer. Really fun, really awesome until one day, Shoko comes into li- his life. Shoko can't hear. Shoya doesn't know how to deal, bullies her. And then the tables turn. People didn't like that Shoya was bullying, but even though they were bullying with him. And then Things just got kind of out of control, and then Shoya kind of got ostracized. And since then, he wanted to turn his life around and be friends with Shoko. But will Shoko receive this olive branch, or will more things come out of it? There are like six volumes, no, seven volumes, seven volumes of this manga series and an anime movie. And holy crap, it used to be like a one shot. I remember when it was a one shot where it just ended right at, as the part where he was just like, hey, can you and me be friends again? And that's it. You're like, that's the end of the story. I can't do that. That was、this. it when it was a one shot. And I was like, what? And when I found out it became a manga series, I had to buy it. And I had to wait with everyone else when it got translated. <laughs> oh, were you reading it while it was like simul pubbed on Crunchyroll, like one chapter at a time? You're like, <laughs> even slower. I had to wait till it was in print. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> You're like, I have to wait for each volume to come out and everything. Exactly. It's terrible, terrible. All right, yeah. So, okay, obviously, you, you first、uh, read it as it was coming out. I, I feel like I actually waited, like, people had told me to read it while it was coming out, and I, like, resisted because I'm, I'm dumb. I think when it finished, I bought all seven volumes and then read them and just cried a lot. Just, like, excessive、yeah. crying. <laughs> It's definitely the manga that made me cry the most, if, you know, people want to know, like, If I didn't cry, I got punched in the feels a lot and going sit down self reflection. I'm like, that happened to me. And that's sort of like, you jerk. I did that. How could I? I'm like, no, you idiot. Don't do that. I did that too. That kind of thing. Yeah, no, exactly. I was like, this is so relatable. Like, I used to be a bit of a bully and now it's like, what's happening? <laughs> Like, it's so sad. It's sort of like a lot of the different characters. It's, it's sort of like when you write a story, or at least.、Um, At least when I,、uh, when I majored in screenwriting, you kind of try to condense as much as you can, and you're, you try not to have too many, like, too many spare characters that don't really add to the plot in any way.、Mm. But the, a lot of the main characters, they do add to the plot, and it's sort of like, why do you exist to hurt me more? Yeah, they're definitely <laughs> just there to hurt you more. <laughs> why would you do this? <laughs> Yeah, so I feel pretty confident in saying that a silent voice, like if you haven't read it yet, weird listener out there, or watch the movie, because the movie's like pretty faithful to the manga. It's like condensed, but pretty faithful to it、mm-hmm. overall. I, I feel safe in saying that it's probably one of the greatest like manga, certainly of our time, but like maybe of all time. <laughs> Just, like... It's really up there. It's hard to beat. Yeah, like the execution of this bullying story is like. A plus <laughs> plus. Like, we'll get into yeah, it. Yeah, because these, just... are, these are really complex themes in this series. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. No, I was like, this manga, seriously, this manga just, like, hurt me in all the ways possible. <laughs> there is no, there's no black or white to it. It's sort of like, Shoya keeps on asking all these questions. I'm all like, I don't know how to answer them. What do you... <laughs> I know. At one point, one of the characters is like, how do you know that you've grown as a person? I'm just like, God, <laughs> like, why? Aren't why you guys teenagers? <laughs> like, why are you so... Why you know so much about the world? <laughs> God, <laughs> calm down. I-, I didn't know much about my life when I was a teen. Oh my God! <laughs> I know. I was just way more just like a terrible brat. Just like never I was, figured yeah, anything exactly. out. I was still a dumb kid when I was a teen, especially in high school. Like, oh my gosh, is this? Oh, I'm just gonna be jumping all over the place. But it's kind of like there was a part where Miyoko, right? Miyoko, yeah, yeah. Miyoko was all like, I. It was all like, I'm going to learn sign language. I'm going to help Shoko. And I was just like, I didn't volunteer, but I remember in PE, we took notes in class because we, we, we had one of those hardcore PE teachers. And the thing is that there was a person in our class that was kind of on the spectrum. So he wasn't really good at paying attention in class. So I was supposed to help him. Mm. So I was all like, but I took really copious notes in class. I was like, here, you can borrow my notes. And then the teacher understood that I was one of those people who was really helpful and everything. But then... I got bullied. I got bullied for it. And then I stopped helping the person. I was like, I should have been a stronger person. I should have been stronger. (laughs) You're like, no regrets. Yeah. It's like anything that you ever regretted that you've done as a child, like a silent voice is going to make you cry about, (laughs) basically. Yes, exactly. Uh, No, yeah, definitely my background with this and like the relatable feels is that like I used to be kind of a bully, but then definitely had the tables somewhat turned. Like I was always kind of both a bully, but also the bullied because I played hockey. I, you know, I'm female, but I played hockey on a all male team. So obviously there was relentless like gender bullying there. Oh no! Um, but yeah, but then like Outside of that, I, I still hung out with the cool kids when I was in elementary school. Yeah, there are cool kids in elementary school, y'all. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> and I definitely hung out with them. And I remember we, we, like, me and my best friend, we lived next door to each other. And then somebody else around our age moved in across the street. And he wanted to be friends with us. But we just, like, relentlessly bullied, bullied him. Like, to a point where he came to school and actually threatened us with, like, a dental tool. And we got oh, him no. suspended. For that, and it's just kind of like I think about that a lot. And I'm like, I understand that what he did was wrong, and like, yes, he should have been suspended. But at the same time, you know, like we bullied him into that, basically. Like we bullied him into being like a bad person. And I'm like, oh, great, great, like nine year old uh, me. <laughs> so like, uh, those are the types of things. And then I am not at all disabled, but in my family, I have an uncle with Down syndrome, uh, a cousin who is blind, and another who has cerebral palsy. So like. I have, you know, the the secondhand experience and like the firsthand experience of being mean to them sometimes, you know, like oh, no. like a terrible person. I know, young me is trash, y'all. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Just like, and uh, yeah, we'll get into like, oh, if you, you know, please forgive young me. <laughs> like, please forgive young me, y'all. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. Are we ever ugh, sort of like, do we ever? Can we really ever move on? That kind of thing. Because I know that when we had um our high school reunion and I was just like I'm not going back I don't want to meet my bullies I I don't think I can forgive them even now and I'm all like oh no really Kimlin really and I'm like I don't know they really hurt me yo I know it's really hard yeah I know no there's I also got into a street fight once which sounds more badass than it was because again I was like 10 (laughs) it was like me and some of my cousins beat up some, like, wannabe friends in, like, a, a back alley in Philadelphia. And uh, they had a little child with them who was, like, four. You know, we're ten. They're, he's four. And I pushed mm-hmm. him over with a bat. Like, I didn't hit him with the bat. I just, like, tapped him in the chest. And then he fell over and cried and oh, ran no. away. And that's how the fight ended. And I think about that to this day. I'm like, what did I teach this four-year-old child? What has happened? What did, what did I do? Why was I like this? <laughs> Why was this? Such- yeah. From, like, 12 and younger, I was just a terrible, terrible child. But, like, in the guise of being a really good child, it was really bad. <laughs> really. Oh, no. I know. Kim Lynn, this is a terrible introduction to me. I swear I'm a better person now. <laughs> Don't worry. I, I was kind of, like, always grew up as the person who got bullied a lot. But it's kind of like, you know what? I will get back to I'm going to get all you guys back. 
I'm going to be the villain. <laughs> Vengeance. Yeah, you're like, I'm just going to do better than you. That'll show you. And that <laughs> like, doesn't always work. It just made me really bitter. Sometimes I don't make it. I'm all like, then, then I'm all like, what is real redemption? Is this just to make me feel better? What is this? What does it mean? <laughs> what does it mean? I know. We're never going to find out the answers to these questions. You're going to torture us forever. <laughs> yeah. Basically. <laughs> Um, okay, yeah, so now that we've got into, like, our backgrounds of relatability, it also is good to note that, uh, the author of the series is apparently the daughter of a sign language interpreter, so that's why, you know, she's able to write so well about <laughs> a series about bullying a deaf girl in particular. It's definitely won a ton of, like, manga awards, and in the West it was even nominated for an Eisner, which was a big deal <laughs> back in the day. Uh, before Rumiko Takahashi like came and actually won the Eisner, I guess you know <laughs> this was this was oh. a big deal. Yeah, and I guess oh, we didn't say when we had watched the movie. So you watched at least the first half, just the first half until my mom Recently. came home and I was like, no, she's gonna interrupt the movie, and then we didn't get to watch the second half. <laughs> You're like, I don't want to cry in front of her. <laughs> like, I don't want to cry in front of mom, and she'll be like, why are you crying at these cartoons? And I'm like, it's not a cartoon, mom. <laughs> it's very serious. <laughs> it's very serious. I know. Uh, so I actually feel very bad because I didn't no, I, I didn't rewatch the movie for this. And also the only time I've seen the movie was actually in whatever year this movie came out. I was in Japan at the time. So I actually saw it in theaters and I had just read the manga too. But So I don't know Japanese. So I was like, I'm not actually able to understand anything they say. It was basically just me being like, I just read the manga. So like I know generally what's going on. Uh, but I have never, in fact, watched it in a language that I understand. So, sorry, listeners. <laughs> Hello, this is Editor Ashley jumping in here to correct me about my own history with this movie. Apparently, I did watch this movie once in a language that I understood in American theaters. And this was pointed out to me by my ex-boyfriend. And I have no recollection of this happening. So, I think that speaks to you about how impactful this movie truly was on my life. And which one I prefer, manga or movie? It's manga. I mean, I still know, like, that gives me, I do know some of the things that were condensed. And, like, the music is the same. <laughs> you know, I didn't it's need through a lot of stuff, yeah. Yeah. And then if you, for some reason, have not yet read the manga, or it is available from Kodansha USA... So you can, I, is it still on Crunchyroll? It might still be on Crunchyroll in their like weak little manga section. Then <laughs> you can read all of it, but don't quote me on that. That might not be true. Um, and the movie adaptation made by Kiyoani, which is very sad and tragic these days, uh, is currently available on Netflix in the US. I don't know, by the time I release this episode, it might not be because everything is wishy washy, but <laughs> it currently is. Um, and if you have only seen the movie again, it is fairly faithful, so you should be able to follow most of what we say without being too terribly confused. But yeah, it's very hard to discuss anything without spoilers, so we're just gonna jump right in. So this is the spoiler warning. If you have not read A Silent Voice or watched the movie yet, you should go do one of those things, or both of them. I don't know how much time you have in your life, but, uh, great. So I'd put out a call for listener questions and comments, and we did get a lot of them. We'll start off from, this is a comment from the Manga Machinations podcast, which is at Manga Mac Podcast on Twitter. Uh, I mean, don't know how I'm going to explain this quite yet out loud, but all right. So it is because of the, the kanji. I know because of the kanji. There's kanji in this. I'm going to do my best. So uh, the Japanese title is Koe no Katachi or Shape of Sound. But Oima specifically used a very complicated looking kanji for sound instead of the more common and much less complicated looking <laughs> uh, character for sound. Uh, so the the complicated one is made of a combination using the kanji for voice, the kanji for meaning, and the kanji for ear, which matches per perfectly with the series. Oh. Yeah, and I'm like, that's really nice. And I do, it's so hard for me because I do wonder what's left out in translation of the series. Like, even just with their names, like Shoya and Shoko, basically have the same name with the you know them having show as their nickname is is a thing and i'm like oh do they have the same characters the same character like i don't know i didn't look or that they up signify different things yeah yeah or do they signify different things and it just sounds the same i don't know somebody can come tell me my ignorant self <laughs> if that's true um the one thing that i really really loved translation wise is that um there's that scene where 
Shoko is trying to tell Shoya that she loves him. And she decides, ah. I know, it's so, it's like, Shoko, just use sign language. <laughs> it was so cute. It's so like, cute. No, it's not, you love the moon? And I'm like, no, you idiot. She's no, stupid. Say, you love you. No, stupid. <laughs> he just doesn't think that she could ever love him, which is like, you know what? Fair. Fair interpretation. <laughs> fair. That it is fair. <laughs> But yeah, so Shoko decides that she's not going to use sign language because she wants to, you know, be quote unquote normal. And uh, she's like, oh, you know, Shoya is kind of an asshat, really, and like doesn't really listen to her for the first six volumes of this manga to be, <laughs> to be true. So she's, she's trying to say out loud, I love you, but, you know, her speech is somewhat impaired because she mm-hmm. is deaf and can't really hear herself. Uh, so it comes up. In English, it's like I I love you, wub wub moo or something, and then I love moo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> and then he's like the moon, and so he he makes the sign language for moon too, which is just like the crescent with your index and thumb, basically like making a, a crescent moon. Um, and I'm like, wow, it's so nice that this actually works in all three languages because in in Japanese it would be ski and suki and one of them is moon and one of them is like i like you (laughs) and so i'm like wow it's really good because like it would be hard to be like oh he makes the sign for moon like you can't like i don't know you can't really fudge what what the misinterpretation is uh i think there's also you know like they draw the moon in the sky at that time too yeah they do (laughs) yeah so i'm just like oh i wonder i hope that works in other languages oh boy (laughs) like I would I would love to know in what languages that that is a real pain in the ass if somebody can come tell me. <laughs> yeah. uh, surely that doesn't work in all languages. <laughs> like, yeah, I imagine that some languages, some translator was like, "Burn it to the ground!" <laughs> like, I hate it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it would work in Vietnamese. I'm trying to think about it right now, and I'm just like, "Yeah, you have to be really creative. Yeah, you have to be super creative." creative. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So. That, that's a beautiful thing where uh, three three languages came together, and I just really love that moment. <laughs> but also, it's so sad because you're like, no, they don't understand each other at all. <laughs> um, and then, okay, this this next one is big. I feel all right. So, <laughs> getting to the real hard questions real fast. <laughs> okay, so this is from Bacchus Spines on Twitter. I'm sorry if I don't know how to I don't know how to say words. Um, but anyway, the question the question is. Is Shoya really a redeemable character? I always wondered this. Kimlin, do you have do you have thoughts and feelings about this before I launch into a rant? <laughs> I don't know. It was really hard. Part of me wants to say that he really is because he he the effort. I think by the end of the series, they say that the effort you spend trying to better yourself is more meaningful than the result or what you accomplish. That as long as you keep trying, because there is never going to be an end result. You can never make up what terrible things you've done, a a whole childhood you've taken away, but at least you have to keep trying. It's kind of like Zootopia's try everything kind of thing. (laughs) So it's kind of like, and I was all like, you know what, as long as you put it that way, it makes some sense because he, he does seem very, very remorseful, especially though he does. It's sort of like, I know that there are some people who say that, Hey, you, as long as you don't do it again, you're fine. But then it's kind of like a whole childhood of doing this. But it's been years since then. He hasn't been trying to do it since, so it should be okay. I think it should be redeemable. Though I will say the way he went about it was kind of, ooh. It's sort of like, I'm not sure if I would be able to do the same thing. <laughs> or yeah. if I would, if like, if if a bully was sort of like, hey, sorry, I messed up your childhood, Kimlin. Can we be friends? I would be like, I would do the same thing that Shoko did and just run away. So... <laughs> It's, my sister watched um, the first half of si- Silent Voice with me, the anime with me, and she was like, I would punch him then run away, said my sister. And I was, <laughs> and I was like, oh no. It's a valid response. <laughs> and I was just like, I don't know. Well, it's sort of like, it's kind of different. For Shoya, yes, I think Shoya is redeemable. My bullies, probably not. If I was kind of like in Shoko's shoes, I don't know. Shoko seems like a, a way different person than I am. So it's sort of like, <laughs> that's for sure. So it's kind of like, yes, Shoya is redeemable, I think, maybe. For the most part, I think so. They definitely made him more um, 
based on the acting for the dub anyways, they made him, or at least not my interpretation of the anime, they made him a lot more sympathetic rather than mm. really driving home on how mean he was like he was inside the manga. Because it was just that he just showed that he was just awkward and he didn't know how to human. While inside the manga, he really went out of his way and said, I hate Shoko. She ruins everything. Yeah. She <laughs> tore my fa- she she tore my my friends apart. Everything is her fault. Her fault instead of being like, Hey, this is my fault. Which is what he eventually learns. So that's what makes him redeemable. But it's sort of like, ooh, ooh. Okay, Shoya. Yeah. You had to learn a lot of stuff, Shoya. Oh yeah. No. I mean, again, it's like Shoko running away when she sees him out of nowhere without knowing any of his character growth within the past, whatever, how many years they've been separated, seven. (laughs) I'm just making up a number. But like, she doesn't know anything about what he's become. So it's like, yeah, I would run away too. (laughs) Be like, this guy is bad news and he just wants to like make fun of me and rip out my hearing aids again or whatever (laughs) he does. Like, he's real bad. Yeah, but I kind of feel like... Ah, so one of the differences reading it this time compared to the first time I read it is definitely that I was like, oh, yeah, all of these characters are like worse than I remember them being, basically. And I was like, oh, I'm like less forgiving of how you're like, oh, the first volume is definitely all them being very big bullies. Oh, yeah. Uh, all as, of them. Yeah. It's just all of them. And then but then you're like, oh, they get back together. They seem nice. And then you're like, oh. But they're, like, oh, not really being brats. that nice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's kind of like, um, let's see. Naoko is all like, hey, you know what? The reason why she is a br- the still a brat is that she kind of represents that um, instead of putting on a facade of being polite like um, like Miki, the thing is that just, say, just blurt things out. Tack? What tack? Just be honest and frank with yourself. And that's what she, I think, what she respects, even though it's not very nice. And it's sort of like, Unfortunately, you have everybody being nice for their own personal reasons. And it's kind of like, no, (laughs) it seems very selfish. It's kind of like that argument, not argument, but kind of like that philosophical element of altruism. Are we doing things because we actually are nice or are we doing it just to make ourselves feel better? Yeah. And Naoka is interesting, too, because she's not like... I don't, she just never thinks that she's wrong. She's like, I don't want to disavow my past self because my past self is correct. Like, I don't disagree with my past self inherently. And I'm just like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, what's going didn't on? you grow? <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> and like, on one hand, that's admirable because she's like, I'm not going to disavow what I did in the past. And on the other hand, it's like, uh, you kind of need to like grow and just like acknowledge what you did though like i don't know <laughs> now can i get it together <laughs> yeah but it's like even though through six volumes they're all being real real you know poop heads about everything in the end i feel like the message is that it's like no they're all redeemable and like you need to forgive them because if you if you don't like the cycle just continues it just keeps going yeah they have to keep trying they have to keep trying that's the real message <laughs> Yeah, and it's, like, a lot of what this manga deals with is, like, punishment. It's, like, punishment of yourself and, you know, others punishing you and just from all facets. So it's, like, Shoya tries to punish himself, like, after he realizes how bad he's been and everybody starts bullying him. He's, like, oh, I, like, made, like, his mom had to pay for the hearing aids that he destroyed (laughs) multiple Mm -hmm. times because he got found out. And he's like, oh, so he works really hard to save up seventeen thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. Which is like a lot of money, especially for a high schooler. So he works really hard. Like that's his punishment is like working really hard for nothing. Like he's not using that money to buy anything fun for himself or anything. Mm-hmm. Then you have Satoshi later on, who's just like, you know what? I hate bullies, and it's kind of like made yeah. for a person who ca- cast for stone be free of sin or something like that. And he's like, you know what? I was bullied. That means I'm a I'm allowed to judge people. Yeah, I'm gonna punch you because yeah. you bullied people. I'm like, are, are you really sure that that makes you okay? That kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And then Shoya's like, I deserve like I should take my own life. Like that's my punishment. And you know, people are like, no, 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 that's a bit extreme. And Shoko also has this like. I'm the reason for everything. So she tries to punish herself by also trying to commit suicide. And Yuzuru is definitely a a punisher. Uh, So Shoko's sister, little sister, is always trying to protect Shoko without asking what Shoko actually wants. Like she tries to keep Shoya and Shoko apart at the very beginning, at least, Mm -hmm. uh, when Shoya's trying to get back into their life. 
and Yuzuru, but Yuzuru doesn't doesn't ask like Shoko if that's what she wants. She's just like, I assume that he's still a, he's still a, a jerk, and I'm protecting you. Yeah, like, and I'm protecting you. And it's just like everybody's doing these things based like not thinking of what the actual people want at all. Yeah. And just like this, this cycle of punishment, it will never be enough. Like how, how much does Shoya have to repent for what he did before it's, it's all right? Like, does he have to go to jail? Does he have to, does he have to die? Like what, what, at what point do you forgive him? Right? Like, or what, at what point does it become like a a non-factor in anything anymore? And it's like, I don't know what the answer is, but obviously like, uh, you know, the whole point is that through six volumes, they're all terrible to each other and they fight all the time. And then the last one, they're like, hey, we're actually going to listen to each other and, like, not make assumptions about what to do for each other. <laughs> and that works out way better for them. So, like, yes, Shoya is a redeemable character. <laughs> yeah, especially because I know that um, I'm learning about this more nowadays, especially because we're now adults. We can, we can now explore these really dark and deep feelings that we didn't get to figure out as well as children because we are still cognitively growing at the time. And it's sort of like whenever we abuse people like Shoya to Shoko, the thing is that to really make amends about it, it's all instead of victim blaming, like saying, hey, it's Shoko's fault. Mm-hmm. He really tried to redeem himself by trying to make it up to the vic- victim. It's all about it's all about trying to make up make it up to Shoko. Everything's about Shoko, though. He's also kind of grappling with his crush at the same time, though. So he doesn't know yeah. how to feel. <laughs> He never comes to terms with that. No, <laughs> he never comes to terms with that. No, <laughs> even by the end of the f- final book, he doesn't come to terms. No, term not term at all. That. No. <laughs> <laughs> so it's sort of like um, I think another thing that makes him redeemable is that he does try to make sure that it isn't just just for him to feel better, even though he thinks so. Um, it's a uh, it's all about making it up to Shoko and what Shoko ne- needs feels and even when she thought about offing herself which is terrible no don't do that victim blame bad and also like no don't blame yourself you did nothing wrong Uh, no both of you stop it but uh, now i'm just rambling but it's to serve like i think it's he's redeemable especially because it's not because it isn't selfish i think at least I hope so. And my yeah. interpretation is that it wasn't selfish at all. He just, he's just, wor- the entire time he was worried that he was coming off as selfish. Yeah, the entire time he's scared that he's doing the wrong thing. And sometimes he is. But in general, I'm like, no, Shoko, like, at least in the beginning, she was like, I want to see Miyoko. And like, he did make the effort to be like, okay, I'll go find all these people for you, Shoko. <laughs> like, I'll gather yeah. them all up and we'll have some fun, I guess, <laughs> you know, like wasn't like completely ignoring her wishes or anything. He's just like 75% of the time not really listening. <laughs> I don't know. And then the way that I think about it is that like I get more and more disillusioned with like social media plays somewhat of a part in this story because um, Shoya gets like outed online basically for jumping off the bridge. The one time that he jumps off the bridge for a, for good, a good reason. reason. Yeah. He gets outed and then gets suspended. So it's also like you know, there's a lot of like boy cried wolf mentality yeah. here where it's like, oh, you should always keep punishing people, even though they actually have changed. You just don't realize and it. And then transferred they get... schools even. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then it's like he keeps being like people keep getting punished. Like Tomohiro also lies a lot about having friends. So people don't believe him when he does actually does have friends. Yeah. Uh, Shoya finally gets punished for jumping off a bridge, but only after he's like finally done it for a good reason. Not all the like 50 million other times that he jumped off the bridge just to be a little brat about it. Like, Yeah, what was up with that? (laughs) Yeah, so it's like this transference of punishment too is like, yeah, it's not helpful to do it a decade or whatever later. It's like you're just dumb at that point. Like it's just it's not it's not helpful at all. And so I, I feel like I see this a lot on social media where people like learn something about somebody's past or like hear a story out of context completely of like any timeline or just you know it's just a story culture yeah like it's just a story in their timeline and they're just like oh my god this person is the worst person ever and it's like you know you took like five seconds of a person's life and we're like oh they did this bad thing and it's like okay depending on the scale of the bad thing like yeah depending on scale are are warranted but like i don't know like recently my um my ex tweeted an old story about me and him when we were younger. And like, I'm not going to say this is a good thing, but he was just like, yeah, I remember my, my girlfriend at the time, like made fun of me because I called college campuses pretty. And like, that's just a sign of like really gendered terms. 
And I'm like, yeah, okay. I mean, that's not good. But in the grand scheme of terrible things that I've done in my life, it's like pretty low on my list of terrible things that I've done. Uh, But somebody came in and was just like, what? This is like bonkers. That's so sexist. And like all these things. And I was like, you don't know me at all. Like You're judging me based on like a 12 year old story. Like, what are you doing? (laughs) Like, calm down. (laughs) Again, not even remotely close to the worst thing I've done in my life. You guys, I haven't cited violence. Like... (laughs) Beyond the stories that I already told you at the beginning of this podcast. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've done some terrible things. Like, I've hurt people physically. I've hurt yeah. people with my words. And it's sort of like, those are awful things. And then it's sort of like, also sort of like I try to make up for it since it's sort of like, okay, Kimlin, don't do that again. Just don't do that again. It's sort of like, I don't know it's if people will be able to be there for the whole journey to know that I've come have come a long way just like how people are just seeing snapshots of Shoya's life instead of realizing that he's actually trying to make up for it and learn sign language that takes an effort to learn a whole language I know and it's sort of like everybody goes through their whole life and it's sort of like just to take no one's free of sin here not I'm saying I'm not saying that oh everyone has sin or something like that because I'm I am agnostic but I'm just saying that it's kind of like everybody has messed up everyone has messed up they've said bad words they've done terrible things and the thing is that no one is as spotless and clean as they think they are yeah you need to take that accountability and then give people the benefit of the doubt or we'll never get anywhere as like humans we'll all just hate each other forever it'll be a spiral of badness (laughs) that's the true meaning of a silent voice (laughs) yes we all have to grow we have to keep trying we have to keep trying so now we have a series of questions from Lun- Lum Ramayasha, who is the host of the Manga Mavericks podcast. Um, and he sent these via email. So y'all don't already know what they are. You're not if you're stalking me on Twitter. <laughs> um, <laughs> so there are there are five and they also have reactions from from him. Um, so the first one is, what was your guys's reaction to the moment where Shoya falls from the balcony after preventing Shoko's suicide? What direction did you think the story would take after reading that chapter? Uh, that was the chapter I caught up to the series on when it was originally being simul published on Crunchyroll, so I remember being completely stunned and unsure of what was going to happen the following week. That entire final stretch of the series was a roller coaster of emotions to keep up with. Uh, so, what was your reaction, Kimlin? <laughs> No, it's just that's it was a very visceral reaction because it's sort of like one first Shoko was trying to commit suicide. I thought I was just like, no, Shoko, I thought things were okay. What I mean, things weren't okay at the bridge, but everyone cooled off, right? You're not, no, Shoko, no. And then Shoya falls, and I was like, what happened? And then by the end of the when Shoya woke up from the hospital, I thought that Shoya would lose his hearing, and I was like, what? Yeah. That's why I thought the direction was gonna go, but it didn't go that direction, but. Oh my god, that was crazy. Because it's sort of like it kind of like ramps up the stakes and kind of adds the adds the consequences to what happens when we they don't listen to each other. Things just go they things hurt even more. <laughs> Guess they because people internalize these things. Uh yeah, and it's just like, oh my god, no, Shoko, if only you knew that Shoya had wanted to commit suicide and then like you saved him by being like, "Oh, you don't hate him basically." upon re-meeting him and like he's like oh yeah like uh, we can maybe i don't have to take my life to to help this girl get better like maybe i can actually do something for her and with her uh and then it's it's really sad because yeah like shoya messes up enough that she's still like no i deserve to die still and it's like what it's really sad because it's sort of like the reason why shoko wanted to commit suicide was that she felt like she ruined everything that Shoya worked so hard to put together and fix and heal from after all that damage that happened but she was blaming herself because she always hated herself and it's sort of like no don't hate yourself please don't hate yourself it's not your fault and it, uh, uh, I just want to collapse on you <laughs> I know she's always thought that she's like selfish because she was like I wanted to go to a regular school and hang out with normal kids and like you see her dream, and, and like after Shoya's still in the hospital, there are chapters with Sh- Shoko from Shoko's perspective. You see her like fantasy dream where it's like, oh yeah, everything's happy, and people like accept her, her somewhat you know garbled speech, and they they still follow along with what she says and everything. And it's like, oh Shoko, like you didn't really ask too much of people. Like 
I see the seeds of her thoughts, right? Like where she's like, oh, yeah. I, I, I wanted something that was too much for, for people. Like they weren't willing to meet me there. And I'm like, yeah, like maybe you had a bit unrealistic expectations, but it's not super uncalled for for them to like meet you <laughs> halfway here or anything, which they did not. Like then that and that's their fault. Um, mm-hmm. What direction did I think the story would take? I don't know. I mean, I was just like, Shoya's surely not dead. Because first of all, they drank the water from the well that saved them, the immortal. Oh, yeah. The immortal water. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as that came up, I was like, oh, yeah, it's the water that saved them. You know, it's like, <laughs> they even made that joke after he like rolled over, <laughs> like he fell down. I'm like, no, you thought the water saved you then. No, it was now, bro. It's now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was like, surely he's not dead. I don't know. I'm very bad at predicting like what direction any stories will take, but I am, I am, I love the story, the, the direction it did take, which was like going character by character from their point of view. I thought that was a really good use of Shoya not being conscious. <laughs> and on the cover of the books is sort of like, you see, usually you see Shoko and Shoya together, but on that one volume, it's sort of like, you, you just see Shoko. Yeah, you just That's see it. Shoko with her arm in a sling, and it's like she's underwater. It's all, it's very good. <laughs> I was like, what happened? What broke the pattern? What's going to happen? And you're all like, oh, ooh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm reading it in volume form. You must be like, oh, something ominous. <laughs> no, yeah. Even rereading it this time, I was like, I know what happens. I know where it happens now. <laughs> like, oh, God. <laughs> Why is this? No, <laughs> I can't prepare for this devastation. Um, okay, so question two was something that I also wanted to speak to anyway. So it's, it's good that we were asked. <laughs> um, so speaking of powerful moments, what scene made you cry the hardest? Uh, for Lum Ram Mayasha, the scene where Yuzuru and her mom take down her pictures on the wall and Yuzuru uh, laments that even showing Shoko pictures of death wasn't able to dissuade her from attempting suicide. And the entire family just breaking down in tears. That was the most heartbreaking moment for sure. Uh, what was uh, yours, Kimlin? The hardest. <laughs> the cry the hardest. <laughs> yeah. I didn't really cry when I was reading this. Not because I, uh, not because it wasn't strong enough or anything like that. But rather sort of like I was kind of like, have, have you ever like sit, put down the book and you just stare at a ceiling or something like that in a really long time in self-contemplation? I had a yeah. lot of those. <laughs> you had a lot of those moments. All right. <laughs> It's sort of like I had at least one of them for almost every volume. Like, um, let's see. I I know that for, I mentioned the story earlier about what happened with to um, Miyoko, where she's like, I'm going to learn sign language and then I'm going to go help Shoko. And then you're like, nice job getting brownie points. And I was like, Ugh. yeah. And I, and I just had a flashback to like, that happened. I wasn't strong enough. I should have been a stronger kid. Then I would have been helpful to, to my friend, my classmate. I don't know what happened to that classmate now. And it's sort of like every once in a while, I'll be like, oh my God. It's sort of like if I was, um, if I was like this, I was like that. That's one of them. I do know that when, uh, especially when Shoko was um, coming back and do in that scene with the, just trying to dissuade her from trying to commit suicide. Mm-hmm. Or it's sort of like the kind of, that's really hurtful that the family knew for the longest time that Shoko really hated herself and want, well, yeah, they did know for the longest time because Yuzuru was there when Shoko said, I want to, ki- I don't want to live anymore and, yeah. and signed it out to her. And it's sort of like, I don't know, it is really heartbreaking because it's sort of like, it's kind of like they were there for her, but there's, they weren't really talking to her enough in the way that would actually address this internalized problem that she has. And yeah. I'm just speaking that about this from a kind of like a therapy standpoint, because this is, ooh, this series is rife with like, kids, go to therapy. <laughs> kids, go to therapy. Yeah. <laughs> Please go to therapy. <laughs> you definitely need it. <laughs> Not to say, oh, no, you can handle it on your own. No, this is really serious. This is actually therapy level stuff that you that this would actually help you all because it's really this could hurt each other, hurt other people. It's kind of like, oh, my gosh. That's one of those things that I remember there were times when um, when I was in mi- middle school, middle school, and I would just keep on asking my dad in the car it's sur- and stuff along the lines of surf like, dad, have you um, have you ever seen a dead body or anything like that? And he says, yes, but he did not want to talk too much about it because he survived the Vietnam War. And 
I remember kept, kept on talking about death a lot throughout middle school because I was being bullied throughout middle school too. I was bullied through a lot of a lot of my childhood because I was a weird kid. And then at one at one point, he finally spoke and says, "Man, you're talking about death all, a lot. Are you all right?" And that's probably the only time he ever asked me about it. But he never really followed up on it. And it kind of reminded me of with that and Shoko's family, in which they probably did realize that something was wrong. But they didn't just keep following up on it like they thought, oh, I did my piece. I did ask and she doesn't want to talk about it anymore. And that's that. When instead of sort of like, no, this is really deep seated stuff that they should actually address and actually go, hey, Shoko, are you all right? Do you love yourself? And she'll probably say no or try to do that smile thing again because she wants to diffuse problems. Yep. But the thing is that she's internalizing these problems and that's probably like, no, go to therapy. <laughs> so. Go to therapy. So you t- at least talk some, well, talk the best way that she can communicate anyways. And serve sort of like, and the serve, sort of, they weren't listening to each other or listening in a figurative sense, if you know what I mean. So, uh. yeah, no. I mean, it, it's like, for, for me, also the, like, not that specific scene that uh, Lum mentioned, but definitely the things that made me cry the hardest this, this second time around were related to Shoko's family as well. Uh, like, first of all, the introduction of the grandma where you're like, I'm in love with this character in 20 pages and now she's dead is like very emotionally impactful. And you're like, oh, God, this is so tragic. Um, so that definitely made me cry a little bit. Um, what moment made me cry the hardest, though? I think the moment that made me cry the hardest was also with um, Shogo's family. But it was the moment where they're arguing about Shoko, like how to style her hair. Uh, Mm -hmm. and all the like gendered implications about it and then wordlessly Yuzuru just like cuts off her hair to be like I will be the boy here I will be the protector and like they don't say anything it's just like and and I think it's only impactful from all the things that have built up with that with their mom you see the backstory of their dad just being complete jerkwad face like being like yeah but oh my gosh that that parents this scene was just like awful you know, it's I hated that scene. I was just like, "Oh, you gave us a messed up child." I'm like, "But what? No, you can't help these things." I know they're like what? it's because you got um a virus, and she's like, "I got it from you, dummy." Like, <laughs> oh. and, was, uh, uh, and they're like, "We don't want to be part of this family. You gave us a flawed child," and I'm just like, "That's not fair." That's, That's not, not how this all. works. That's not, That's how, not this how, works. how it works. I thought it was about ha- loving you, loving your spouse and all that stuff instead of like, oh, yes, I only love you because I want to have children. And I'm like, what? What is this relationship? Only healthy children at that. <laughs> only healthy <laughs> children. You must bear a healthy heir yeah. for this family. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so like you get all that backstory where it's like, oh, that's the moment where her mom learned to be like really strict and like with herself and with everybody to like get what she wants and like not cry anymore. And that, that did paint a really strong picture because it's sort of like, I know some manga are like, Oh yes, here is the bad guy. And then here's the flashback to the, make the bad guy sympathetic, but the bad guy's dead. Whoopsie do, whoopsie do. But this is a person who's still very much alive throughout the entire series. She doesn't go away, but she goes, she gets more sympathetic as we go on because we learned that she is, um, we learned from the grandma, uh, well, postmortem, that she's putting up a a strict face because she just has that much love for her family. It's it's kind of like how one time my mom, uh, my mom hasn't always been the love. She is really loving, but she doesn't know how to express her love. And then there's one time that um, my one of my aunts said that, "Oh, you're so spoiled. You you kids are so spoiled. I hate you." And then I was just like, "You kids oh, these days." <laughs> You kids these days, exactly. Oh, you with your video games and your weird knickknacks and stuff. And then I remember crying because it's sort of like, I know that's not true because I know it's not true. And it's sort of like, I just just broke down and cried because it's sort of like, I'm not spoiled. And I know I'm not spoiled because I try to help people. I do not brag about my stuff. I know I have a very privileged life because my mom fought really hard to get us to where we are. She overcame gender and class barriers just to get us to where we are. And then I remember mom coming in. She wasn't very good at expressing herself, but she says, sometimes I just buy you all the things that you want because I don't know how to express that I love you. And I was just like, oh, my God. I didn't realize until many years later. I'm like, oh, my God. 
that's her only way of expressing how she loves us by getting us stuff. And mm-hmm. that's kind of really sad because it's sort of like she does, because this is the same mom who rarely hugs us, who rarely um, so- says, I love you or anything like that. She does love us. She does. She is very affectionate. She does um, cook, cook us meals, give us a roof over our head, doesn't demand us to get jobs, even though we still live with her. And she's like old enough to need to go to retirement now, but she's just always caring for her kids the best she can. But it feels so personal because that that because um Shoko's mom, uh, Mrs. Miss Nishimiya, yeah. reminded me of my mom because it's sort of like, oh, she's just doing everything she can because she does love her family. Though my mom is a lot more um more nicer than Miss Miss Nishimiya. Yeah. <laughs> Though Miss Nishimiya does not mess around. She will slap the crap out of you if you mess with her kids. She oh yeah, that, that volume two where she like slapped Shoya. I was like, this is an action manga now. That she's <laughs> action mom. She started beating the crap out of Naoka too. Oh yeah, that they had a full on fight, man. Because <laughs> like... she loves her kids. She doesn't show it very well, but she loves her kids. Though I really like when um, the moms bonded over drinking. That was nice. <laughs> yeah, they had a good. Moment. They were like, they were like, ugh, men. Oh my Ugg god, men. That's a good <laughs> ugh, men. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Just in general, it's true. Uh, yeah, like no, their mom is definitely like a very complicated character, and I don't hate her by the end. I think the the thing that bothers me is that like she never learns sign language, and she's always mean about that. Yeah, that was kind of like I'm like, really? I thought. I mean, you do love your kids, but maybe learning sign would actually help you communicate and listen to your children. I know. I was just like, mm, this is the one part that I, I struggle with. But yeah, like their whole backstory, I was just like, this is so sad. I'm so sad. And uh, I mean, yeah, the, the moment where Yuzuru is like, I took all these pictures of dead things to like prevent her from committing suicide. I was like, oh, that's such a weird way to go about it user but like i appreciate you <laughs> it's sort of like okay what are you trying to say you're trying to say that if you die you'll become yucky but you made these pictures so pretty though but the thing is that at least the picture that shoko picked was the one that is the the nature was growing around what was left of the corpse or where, where the corpse was removed of the bird yeah so that means people life goes on people can grow that kind of thing so maybe that's um, that's what I took away from it, though I will say that that was um, submitted to the contest either, I think, before Shoko tried to commit suicide. Yeah, yeah. So that means the sort of like, maybe that's her interpretation of saying, you know what, life will go on without me, which is really sad oh, when yeah. you think about it. Oh, but the no. thing is, what, but really the sort of like the fact that they brought it up after um, the suicide attempt. That it kind of takes on a different meaning, I think, personally, I think, anyways. That the thing is that people can heal, like nature can heal. At least that's what I took away from it. Yeah, that's nice. I like that. Yeah, uh, you did mention the the scene where uh, Shoko also just, like, signs that she wants to kill herself. And, like, even though you don't know sign language, it's really, yeah, like, that image of her... Just holding both her hands under her neck like there's a rope like there. A new, like a noose, yeah. Yeah, like a noose is like really, really powerful. And I'm just like, oh my god. She she finally it, she finally broke that um the the smile face, the blank, oh okay, I'm just being polite face to like, no, I've reached my limit. I want to die. Oh yeah, she, really she's hurt. also just like full on crying in that that panel. Which I think comes before we get the whole like two chapters with her after Shoya has has saved her and mm-hmm. there's a lot of panels of her crying as an adult there or like as yeah older teen in the, those chapters but yeah so that's definitely a very powerful image and in general like the, I, I cried a lot more the first time around like I think every chapter just like devastated me the first time around yeah um I just remember it like I think both like I'm in a better place myself so I didn't cry as much and like no I think that knowing some things that are going to happen or like yeah like just just knowing some stuff makes it less like it only works the first time to be as powerful because for me one of the the most powerful things reading it the first time that like really put me in Shoya's shoes and made me be like oh I'm I'm just as much as a of a dickhead as he is like basically was that Reading the first volume, I didn't realize that Shoko was like signing to him basically through like in those panels, and you're you're not really supposed to know that either because like Shoya is not paying any attention, so it's not lingered on that she's signing to him that she like wants to be friends and whatever. Uh, and but then there's a very specific moment in volume two 
where he's like, oh, yeah, she only ever wanted to be friends. And, you know, it flashes back to her signing to him. And he just realizes, her, yeah, that part where where he was just like, "I, oh, my gosh, I did the same signs that she did. Yeah, exactly. And finally clicks. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, damn, wait, I'm also an asshat who was like not paying attention <laughs> in the first volume, which like. But then knowing that, reading it the second time, it's like, you know, that's not as powerful because I already know, like, what's up, you know? So, like, those types of things uh, just didn't land as well the second time. But, yeah, you notice, like, different things reading it the second time. Like, oh, yeah. How how much they're still bad. (laughs) Like, even when they're trying to. Like, how much they're still bad. Me, I personally paid attention to, of of all things, to sort of like, hey, I wonder how much um, Shoko would be able to pick up because, well, there's a lot of arguing around around her. So I was just paying attention for con- continuity's sake. It's sort of like, how much can she actually keep up or pay attention to? And it was really consistent the entire the entire series. Like, hey, she couldn't really understand this part. Or it's sort of like, hey, I'll talk slow so you can understand, says Naoka before slapping her on the Ferris wheel. Yeah. And, <laughs> as, and I was like, okay, that's kind of fair. Though I will say that hiding the camera in a very convenient position was kind of like a little bit off for me because it's just frankly it's like where did you put that it's not like inside like shoko's chest was it what but whatever I think it, yeah i think it was just like around just, her neck but yeah it's like a little community. i was just approaching it like a script supervisor yeah you're <laughs> the just entire like, time. Mm. <laughs> like like monk with the, like making sure that all these things are consistent but it was really consistent the entire time <laughs> yeah no and i think uh, see part of me wants to be like oh yeah it probably makes sense as animation like i know that for the english voice cast they casted a deaf person to play shoko so like that's probably really powerful like i do want to watch that at some point um Mm -hmm. but i think that like the manga overall uses like what it can as a medium to show what shoko sees and feels and like what shoya season feels like though those chapters where it is from shoko's perspective uh there's parts of it where the speech bubbles are like both half of the word the top half of all the words are cut off so it's really hard to read and then the words are mispronounced because shoko can't hear them clearly and it's like yeah you have to struggle to sit there and be like what are you really start seeing things from her perspective yeah and the thing is that i at the first time around i remember when the first time it happened, I was just like, I am trying to pay attention, but I want to find out what happens next. This is really <laughs> tedious. <laughs> Not to say it's terrible, but it's kind of like, oh, no, I'm the bad person now. <laughs> this is what it's like that she has to deal with. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, it's like in those panels, they're not saying anything deep. It's just like they're talking about the movie and being like, yeah, it's pretty good now. Like, thanks for your help. Like, they're doing norm- perfectly normal conversation that's just like 10 times as tedious to read because of how that's how it's really what up. she has to deal with yeah yeah so i'm just like wow it does such a good job of like putting you in her shoes and like withholding that from you until you know shoya finally realizes that it's like oh yeah he hasn't been paying attention either and now he's like unconscious for two weeks because yeah. <laughs> he had to go save her from committing suicide and he fell into a river lake thing <laughs> yeah and hurt his butt yeah and hurt his butt that's pretty funny <laughs> i'm not gonna lie <laughs> the good good solid butt jokes are are placed well <laughs> let's just say that um all right we can move on to question three now so what's your impression of miki Kawaii? she's the only character who i feel lacks any self-awareness about the ways in which she hurts people which made me empathize with her the least in my initial reading of the series however it feels like her kindness and righteous anger are performative and act curated to win the approval and admiration of others. I can read. Even if that's something she doesn't consciously recognize. Uh, In my original reading of the series, I felt she was the only character who didn't mature, remaining convinced of her victim complex and that everything she does is right, never apologizing to the very end. Upon rereads of her focal chapter 48... I now see she, her remembering Shoya calling her disgusting while lecturing Shoko an insis- in an insincere speech about valuing life and then dovetailing that speech into one clearly addressed to herself. You have to love your faults too and move forward even if you think, uh, even if you do think of yourself as cute. Uh, is her reassuring herself that it's okay for her to be to like herself even if others don't? I think that's the first real sincere honest moment she has in the manga. 
Do you guys think this moment shows that Miki has the potential to change and form genuine connections with people, having realized she doesn't need to obsess over what other people think of her to win their approval to be happy? Hmm. Let's see. I will say that um, Miki was a little bit performative, that's for sure. Because it was, it seems like she kind of put up this barrier around everyone, this um, facade. Mm. And and the thing is that um, it kind of got really, why? <laughs> why you do this? <laughs> why you do this? Especially when she started crying, like, how dare you accuse me when I didn't do anything wrong to Shogo when she totally did, uh, especially as a kid. And I'm not sure. It's sort of like there was sort of room for her to learn, especially when by the end she kind of broke down and kind of set hug Shoko and did this speech that was more for herself than for Shoko. Yeah. No, no yeah, 100%. <laughs> I was like, yep, Shoko's comforting you now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> especially when Miyoko, um, Miyoko was just like, yeah, I'll tell you what she said later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shoko's just like, this girl's crying now. I'm going to pick her up and, like, hug her. <laughs> like, <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Uh, well, for me, personally, I was just like, Miki is actually not my least favorite character because my least favorite character is the teacher, Mr. Takeuchi. Uh, Miki is definitely my uh, second least favorite character, though. <laughs> yeah, she's pretty much down there. She's, she's um, pretty far down there, yeah. Because <laughs> she mainly wanted to... She wanted to be friends, question mark, with Shoya, just to be with Satoshi, just to be with Satoshi yeah. the entire time. Like, I don't, it's just like, yeah, I, I don't think that Miki did anything to show that she had, like, learned anything, that she was going to progress at all. Like, she just kind of was like, yes, I'm going to own my terribleness. And I'm like, okay, I mean, that's, that's like a no Naoka move, which like they do have a, they hate each other because they're so alike, basically. <laughs> you know, Miki's it's, it's crazy how, how alike they are. And Miki's all like, no, I'm not as blunt or crass as Naoka. She doesn't say it like that, but it might as well be. And then it's like, no, Miki, you're pretty much as bad because you just adopted it a different way. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of like the whole fakeness. You're you're a phony, like um, catching the ride. You're sure you're such a phony. Yeah, you're Miki. such a phony. Honestly, I hate the phonies the most. So Miki definitely rubs me the wrong way. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, they're like Miki. they're two extremes. Naoka and Miki, phonies and really blunt crassness. Yeah, and Miki's like peak. Like, I feel like the point of Miki was supposed to be like, okay, even if Miki didn't do anything super directly terrible to Shoko she also didn't stop them which is like where is the line of accountability for people mm -hmm. uh and she you know she's supposed to know better like that's kind of her whole like perfect shtick and she like didn't do anything so like yeah yeah know, it's their victim complex instead of actually saying you know what, maybe I should have done something I mean at least Miyoko was all was like I should have done something Miki was sort of like oh no how dare you accuse me as so they're like no there's a big difference between you two I know, right? <laughs> and it's just like, when Miki goes to Satoshi and is like, people are bullying me. And I'm like, they're not, though. Like, you sneakily read their text. Like, they didn't say anything to you in person. And she kind of ma made the ostracization happen again. Because sort of like, I remember Shoya was just like, hey, you didn't tell everyone that I was a bully, right? And then she's like, how dare you accuse me? And, and then she started just blowing Flip it out now like just try to the, calm down uh, and she, it just uh, it's your fault i know <laughs> yeah i forgot okay. about that moment i forgot that it was like shoya goes and is like um you didn't tell people right and she's like how dare you think that i would tell people and then she just tells everybody and it's like ah miki come on you, you <laughs> like, get it together yeah so miki doesn't do anything like redeemable in my mind yeah. Like not to, again, not to say that she is not redeemable, but she's definitely like within the story. I'm just like, mm -hmm, Miki. I don't like you. Yeah, I'm like you didn't really do anything that makes me feel good about you, Miki. Uh, <laughs> but I still think the teacher is worse because I don't think that he also learned anything, and I think that as a teacher, he has like the worst attitude of a teacher. Which, like, I guess, like. Satoshi is supposed to be also kind of contrasted with that where he's like oh I wanted to be a teacher for like all the wrong reasons right so he's, he's like oh yeah, maybe yeah. maybe I shouldn't do that um but their, their teacher 
tries to be like you should just sometimes you have to suffer in life and he like doesn't explain like, oh, anything dear. to them and plus the surf like even shoyo is all like oh you think that i changed just because i have a different uniform what is this yeah he's just like why are you making like weird assumptions about me like oh we went to the same school you're you're a terrible person too maybe we're both just terrible people now <laughs> like hey, what's up yeah. <laughs> like, and it's like yeah kind of uh, so because the moment that makes me be like oh this teacher sucks for sure is when the other teacher miss kita is like okay we're all gonna learn Let's sign language sign. yeah yeah and he's like don't you feel uncomfortable having to learn something that like you don't already know miss kita and it's just like what as teachers you should be like yeah it's great learning stuff like you should always want to be learning stuff and he's just like no i've already like he's he's basically like i'm a teacher i teach you things I've already gone on my whole journey of learning and like I'm right so whatever <laughs> like peace and I'm just like you're terrible <laughs> he's really terrible and that scene wasn't in the in the movie oh that scene wasn't in the movie oh yeah I forgot that the teacher is like not as deplorable in the movie that's definitely a thing I hate about the movie I'm like no this this dude's trash <laughs> they, they toned down a lot of stuff they toned down a lot of the trash and I'm like no he needs to be shown that he's trash <laughs> <laughs> because what i don't know yeah they come back and he just like makes all these weird assumptions and he's always going on about like weird philosophy things he's like the morality of whatever and i'm just like shut your face uh, and he's what like oh know? yeah and he, he says about um the nisha mias he's like they mistook they mistook they're just trying to take advantage of the system and all that stuff i'm like no yeah what, what specifically did he, he oh they mistook freedom for taking liberties and i was like wow or you could just not have been a dickhead like i don't know it's like really not this was supposed to be the school that was understanding of disabilities too i know i'm like he's not really understanding he's just kind of like let's see how this goes like maybe it'll work out and then he's like oh these kids are monsters and he laughs too so trash <laughs> trash yeah, so I, I, I feel like I don't viscerally hate anybody else except for Miki and the teacher. <laughs> I don't know if you have other people that you all, like severely dislike, but... I really, I'm on the same page. I just like them both, especially the teacher. I know, I thought, like, I could see why people probably put Naoka as a top hate too, but I'm like, you know what? I feel like I, I understand Naoka, though. <laughs> like, I understand. At least I understand Naoka. Yeah, like, I understand where she's coming from. She has motivations. She very clearly states that. She's like, you know what? It's like, you don't become friends. You don't have to have a specific reason for liking somebody or becoming friends with them. But when you hate somebody, you have, like, very, very clear reasons. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, Naoka knows what she's about. Like, she knows what she's doing. She owns it, and... She's at the end. She comes to more of an understanding with Shoko from Shoko's perspective than Miki does, or that damn teacher. <laughs> like, yeah. So I'm like, you know what, Noga, I'm fine. Even though you're definitely the most violent and like petty. Of yeah, any of petty these is definitely the word. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't like you because Sh Shoya likes you more than me. Ah. Ah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Now, cause she's like, I'm literally gonna hold this door closed to Shoya's room <laughs> in his hospital. No one is deserving of entering Shoya's presence. Yeah, only me. I, I'm only the arbiter me. of who gets to see Shoya and who does not. <laughs> okay, so question four is related to the film, which we have briefly discussed. So, what are your thoughts on the film? Even though it condenses the story, I feel it captures the heart of it beautifully. But would you have preferred a silent voice to have been adapted as a TV series to cover everything? What parts from the manga are you most disappointed were in included in the anime? Uh, again, the teacher being terrible. <laughs> it should have been more in the anime. <laughs> um, I don't know. What, do, what are your thoughts, Kiplin? Let's see. I will say, uh, it, since it's so condensed, it doesn't really get to the point, or doesn't get the point across of just how terrible everyone was when they were children. It's, and it's sort of like, I think I would have preferred it as a miniseries or if not a TV series, um, because I think the manga does a really great job doing the entire volume one is just the entire is just their entire childhood. Yeah. One entire volume for their childhood. It was just only like a few minutes. Um, well, maybe like 15 minutes for the childhood inside the anime. And um, it just came off as kids who are like, you know, what? I don't understand how how this deaf person can function. I don't understand you, little girl Shoko. And the little girl Shoko is just like, I just want to be friends. 
<laughs> Yay. And I'm like, okay, that's nice. But it's sort of like, it doesn't, like I said earlier, they try to paint everything as a lot more awkward and more, um, not to say that the, the acting is awkward. I'm the, the acting's great, but I'm saying that it's kind of like, um, they're making the characters a lot more awkward as opposed to actually mean. Mm. It's sort of like, I don't know how to function around you, Shoko, as opposed to, I actually hate you, Shoko. There's a difference between those two things. Yeah. So I think that might, because since I understand that the client probably asked for these results to be accomplished in, or at least um, the results to be um, portrayed in this way in the adaptation or the English localization of the movie, it's sort of like, it's kind of weird. Maybe they were trying to do that on purpose. And it's sort of like, may maybe... But I think it's more efficient, or not efficient, but sort of more effective to see just how mean everyone is. Just so you get the idea across that, hey, are we really, are we really redeemable at the end of the day? So maybe the the length, if they had more length instead of condensing everything, I think that would be a bit more effective. That's what I think. Instead of even though two hours is a lot of time, I don't think two hours is enough. No, to tell it's the not story. enough for this story, though. Yeah, it's not enough for this story. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I definitely think it could have benefited from being like a 13 episode anime or, or something like that. I remember the music being like, I don't some of those choices I found strange, but like overall, I remember it being impactful, uh, especially the, the chorus bits. I, 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 I still find the use of my generation like weird personally, <laughs> uh, <laughs> For the opening title song. For the opening song. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was weird, too. I was just like, where did this come from? What is going on? Yeah, I definitely <laughs> think that's like a definitely a English like barrier thing where that song, you know, has a different impact on us as Americans than it would perhaps to a Japanese audience. I don't know. <laughs> that's how I <laughs> interpret this. Yeah, dog days of summer. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, OK. <laughs> I'm like, OK, what's going on here? It's very weird. <laughs> I remember being disappointed with how just like how condensed the back half of it was particularly the stuff revolving around the film like them making the film in the manga <laughs> uh translated into the anime adaptation was very condensed and me being like eh not feeling it so like yeah in general i just feel like the 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 movie version is like a silent voice the light version like that's like the intro but you don't get the full emotional impact unless you read the manga that's the impression i got too i still need to watch the second half but it's sort of like it's beautiful it's a very beautiful oh, yeah. film but it's sort of like if they kind of give off different messages i feel at the i haven't watched the full film but it's sort of like it gives off this feeling that the mood is different between the manga and side and the movie so you kind of have to watch both watch read consume consume, consume both <laughs> consume both to get your own opinions on the matter yeah and I, I definitely think, I mean, I, again, I do plan to watch it again in a language that I can understand. <laughs> uh, and I'm sure, you know, given the KyoAni fire and everything, there will be some emotions there. But I still think that overall the manga is better. And I, I think that this, uh, you know, the, the, the movie came out around the same time as your name. And I remember there being a whole big war of like, which one's better? And like, they're so different, first of all. They're like, different. Yeah. Calm down. <laughs> like, and, But I do think that it's harder with a silent voice for me to like it more since like your name is also an original anime movie. So there's no like mm -hmm. source. I mean, there are novels now or whatever, but there's no like. Now there are. Yeah. Now. Now there are. Uh, but like. <laughs> It's not, you know, people aren't as big on, like, comparing them, you know, whereas a silent voice, it's hard for me to take being like, okay, I guess that movie is good, but, like, the manga is better for me is <laughs> really where this comes from. I feel the same way. It's sort of like, I know my sister really wants to check out a silent voice and I'm, and she's going to get the movie first. I'm like, no, you, you need to read the manga now. Yeah. <laughs> not I feel to like... say it's bad. Not to say it's, yeah, bad, it's bad, but it's kind of like to get the full scope, though. Manga. Get it. Manga, get it, it, is better. Manga, get it. Borrow from me. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Okay, so there was one more question from Lum. Uh, and it was, how do you feel about the open-endedness of the final chapter? I know a lot of people at the time were unsatisfied with it because they wanted a definitive happily ever after. I see Shoya and Shoko thriving and happy as adults and in a relationship. 
I personally love the ending, the image of Shoya and Shoko walking hand in hand through the door, ready to face whatever possibilities await them, both the good and the bad together. It felt so poetic that these characters, who had felt so isolated and kept their pain to themselves throughout the entire run of the manga, had finally found someone they can rely upon, as Shoyo had put it, to help them live. I actually did like the open-endedness, yeah. because it's sort of like, again, this is kind of like an ongoing thing to really... What does re- what does it mean to be redeemed? There is no like you're redeemed, you're done, that's it, because it's sort of like um, there is kind of like a there is a bit of something like that because that's just going to show in their relationship as opposed to just like hey we're we're uh, we're all good now. It's sort of like it's just going to show in the relationship in that hey we are going to help each other, we're going to support each other, and we're going to actually listen to each other as opposed to just like you, instead of just saying hey I'm sorry this is my can we swear half-assed apology like what Noaka did a few times? So I liked it. And it's sort of like they just had to keep trying and just move on. And that's kind of like life. That's kind of like Joseph Campbell's story about how how everyone's personal mythology just keeps going. There is no end to the story because life keeps going. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I I am shocked that this ending like upsets people in any way i don't know it makes me be like god fandom's trash because <laughs> like, like yeah i'm like no this they is ship a, too hard they, they ship, ship too, hard. too hard calm down like this ending is basically perfect like the end of it is yeah you get a, vi- a volume where they finally like talk to each other like normal people and listen like i really love uh i guess like somewhat immediately after yeah i guess immediately after shoya goes to the bridge uh after running to shoko out of the hospital because of their weird spiritual brain connection thing that's going on here (laughs) condition thing he gets there and normally the manga is like like he's talking out loud he shoko either isn't signing to him because she's like being quiet but she does like a bunch of signs and like he doesn't directly interpret it for the audience he doesn't repeat it back uh you just get like what he responds because he says that out loud still and I'm like, no, that's it's perfect. Like, you, the, you, it's not here for your interpretation. Like, the problem is that everybody's trying to interpret what everybody else is doing and how they feel and all these things. And it's like, okay, it didn't do that. It doesn't care anymore. The final panel of them being like, they finally held hands, which had been like this whole big thing. They, their, all their touches were weird. Uh, even a little before that, Shoko. Shoko had like grabbed his sleeve and like drug him around the school festival like a weirdo and he was like, oh, this is weird. Uh, But no, in the final panel, they finally just like hold hands. They're going to do the same career. They're going to be hairdressers. Like, no, they're definitely going to be together in the future. Like, calm down. (laughs) It's a perfect symbolization of it. They can walk through a door. Yeah, it was great. (laughs) Yep. Nice and simple. Nice and simple. Why, why do I need more? That's what fan fiction is for. Just write your fan fiction, everybody. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. So I did have a, a character list, but I feel like we've mentioned most of them, except maybe like of the main ones. We haven't mentioned Tomohiro because he's not involved in the bullying. The only real thing that he contributed to the story was basically being Shoya's inciting incident in a way. And the thing is that, again, it's sort of like first it was Shoya meeting Shoko, uh, re-meeting Shoko. Mm -hmm. And then it's sort of like, well, it's really they did the X thing. Wow. How do I how do I talky talk? (laughs) The X thing. (laughs) The X X thing. And the thing is, I I like the imagery of Tomihiro trying to reach out to Shoya, even though he was being bullied. He was just trying to look beyond the X to reach out to him. And he's Shoya's just like, you know, what, I'm going to take the initiative and help Tomihiro. Yeah, and then Tom here is just being this um this baller here, just throwing money at everything. <laughs> I know, right? I'm like, where'd you get this money? <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, jeez, and to fund a film too, doing some stunts that I know that they would that would not fly in the film industry, especially without a stunt coordinator. <laughs> yeah, I was like, <laughs> the the hanging scene inside the in their movie. I'm like, no, don't do that stunt on your own. That's dangerous. Oh, yeah. you can kill somebody. <laughs> Satoshi's dead now. <laughs> Satoshi's dead now, dude. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Oops. Didn't mean to, but he is dead. No, Tomohiro is definitely um, the, like, detachment from the past and, like, this this overly optimistic at times uh, person. He has one scene that I really love, though, which is when 
Yeah, um, Choco's in the hospital, and like Naoka's, you know, keeping everybody out of Shoya's room. <laughs> so he's just talking to Shoko, and like I really appreciate that, you know, in the one moment where he's like alone with Shoko, he's like, yeah, we pass this notebook back and forth and have like a real conversation. Too. Yeah. And I'm like, thank you. <laughs> so nice. I was like, oh, that would be nice, Toe Hero. They're like, oh, hey, shall we, let's go make the movie. It is like, it's, instead of just like throwing it away, it's like, yeah, let's do this, Shoko. Instead of being like everything's ruined, no, let's heal. Let's heal together. We will move. We'll make this movie. This relationship will heal. Everything will be okay. Yeah, and then they make it so that Shoko can even act a little bit in it because they decided to make it a silent film with some subtitles. And I'm like, great. Tomohiro knows what's up, even though like he is a little annoying. He's not my favorite character. <laughs> in general, I appreciate him though. Yeah. And then there are some side characters, also. Kazuki and Keisuke, who were Shoujo's friends when he was very little, uh, or, you know, in the initial bullying phase, and then they became his greatest bullies. But then they also saved his life at the end. I'm not going to say that they're good people. They're not good people, but the thing is that they're, they try to heal. Here's this thing I got away, I got from this, um, from the manga. It's just sort of like, they don't want to be a part of his life, but they're healing in their own way. Because you can, they, they like they are trying to reconnect, but not in the direct way. They're because you know Naoko is trying to get Shoya to meet, um, I think Keisuke at the amusement park, and then because Naoko's like, hey, why, why can't we all just be friends again? And then Shoya's like, no, I just don't want to deal with that anymore because I was bullied by him. But then it's sort of like they were, they still wanted to save Shoya's life instead of letting him die. But and it's sort of like by, by the end of the final final volume you just see them just doing their thing in in their own lives and they just glance over at him but that's it to it that's all there is to it they help the movie by contributing the music and then it's just huh it's yeah. just one of those huh kind of things because they you don't really see what goes on in their life they they just come in and out of the story little by little yeah no the biggest moment with them for me was definitely they start bickering over how the movie is like grossly like literally grossly misinterpreted by the judges of the the contest mm -hmm. um so they're all bickering with each other and then kazuki comes in keisuke is there too uh so they're both there but i'm pretty sure it's kazuki who speaks so then he he's just like oh because shoya is gonna run to like try to help them reinterpret their movie to make them all stop bickering about the comments that they received and kazuki's just like he says, who needs val validation from those pieces of uh, of poop anyway? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, and then yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, we true. weren't even using a percentage of our power. We weren't using our top percentage. It was just a summer project anyway. Well, and then, they, and then I think, uh, you know, that's like an excuse. But then I think they even come to see that it's like, oh, no, that guy just like didn't understand it at all. Like he didn't understand what they were trying to say at all in their movie. And then, you know, Naoka and Miyoko go and take their little fairy costume creation because they're both designers to a different contest and they apparently and they win that and i'm like oh, okay i don't know that you should have won that but like sure why not <laughs> sure why not <laughs> manga <laughs> manga uh so yeah i feel like in general it's like oh they weren't even doing their worst work it's just yeah that 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 guy sucked <laughs> he was mean too and that's i was like this is an indie festival why are you just dragging these people over the coals for i was like excuse me no i like i was a little bit like nobody would say this <laughs> like right like i don't know what especially in polite yeah. japan i was like i don't buy this at all <laughs> Ooh, i've got another another scene that made me cry was when shoya's mom does light all the money on fire <laughs> oh by accident <laughs> on accident it was a really it was really funny inside the inside the anime because <laughs> they're like oh he's like please don't kill yourself promise not to kill yourself don't kill yourself okay <laughs> we're like oh crap <laughs> oh no I oh know. no I mean, it, it was kind of t like, I'm just like, yeah, the moment where she's like, why were you going to kill yourself? And then he's all like, oh, no, how did she find out? And then he admits it. And she's like, so you were going to kill yourself because she like didn't know for sure. Right. And I'm just like, oh, no. 
Like, his mom is good. Like, she's weird, but I like her. I like her, too. Yeah. She's and Maria is so cute. Oh, yeah. Mar- Maria. The, the, wait, the subplot with his sister dating, like, Pedro. a Brazilian <laughs> is just like, what is going on here? It was really cute. <laughs> it's really cute. And in some way, I try to be like, okay, is it supposed to be, like, a contrast? Because, like, people who are half in Japan are not usually welcomed. Is it supposed to be a contrast? Like, Shoya is really welcoming of his of his mixed race niece and everything. But I'm like, it's not played for that. It's just, like, it's just there, <laughs> I feel. Like, it's not, it's not trying to make a statement at all. It's just really casual, and it's not, like, looked down on or anything. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's no, it's largely positive. It just doesn't feel like it's integrated into any other theme. It's just kind of like, yeah, it's there. It's happy. It's just there. It's so cute. It's so cute. She's cute. It's like, she- who can resist? <laughs> and Maria's there so they can find um, Yuzuru inside the playground. Yeah. I, I was trying to find, it's sort of like, again, it's kind of like, since Joya's sister was kind of, like, absent for the whole thing. Uh, Maria was kind of oh, yeah. around for a little bit here and there, and um, I just realized that the only the only real plot contribution, aside from being adorable and being just super adorable and kind of like some some lightheartedness in this really sad really sad dark, series, sad series, dark, <laughs> sad series, it's just a, just a really cute little girl. The sweet little girl is for that playground scene. Yeah, we were, where they were looking for Yuzuru. Yeah, and then she like disappears for a while. Yeah, and then she like comes back. At the end, and is like, show you, are you gonna die? Are you gonna yeah. die, show you? And, and it finally dawns on Maria, and we're like, no, no, Shoya, no, he's now, gonna... now he's not gonna die. Now he's now fine. He's, he's fine now, Maria. He's good. He's good. Yeah. So, we, I mean, we went through a lot of themes. I think the only other thing I really wanted to mention is like, I don't, that's just like, I feel like you could have a whole podcast kind of about just like the first volume and how like just the first good it is at setting everything up. And there's a lot of things in there that link like disability and dehumanization, like that that image where Shoya is pouring salt onto a slug. I'm just like, wow, you are a brat pouring salt into wounds. You're just like, I'm not killing literally killing bugs, literally killing things. Um, and he, he thinks Shoko is an alien at first, and he's just like he's just trying to fight boredom, and he's like all all these things. And there's an initial talk of like they're learning about evolution, and I'm like, oh yeah, every everything in this manga is about protecting a social hierarchy. That be strong, like, yeah, be strong, survival of the fittest. You have to look like a dude to be strong against bullies i'm like you don't need to be that but uh. i know i'm like there is definitely some gender stuff in here that i i didn't fully like square in my mind so i was like not gonna bring them up but yeah there's definitely like a gendered undertone especially with the like stoko needs to look like a boy so that she won't be bullied instead she can become the bully but like in general, I feel like it's good because Naoka is definitely like the most aggressive, yeah, <laughs> person in this. Running around she's... slapping people, I know. So many people slap Shoko in this poor series. I know, poor Shoko. Oh my god, this girl. And it, it's really infuriating to read and be like, yeah, we're not getting her perspective at all for six volumes. But then like the 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 shift into her perspective is just like so good. Like the execution of everything in this manga is just so good. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I, I mean, it's just like, yeah, everybody's just like, gotta, gotta preserve some sort of social, social hierarchy, some physical hierarchy. And then they're all like, oh, wait, no, maybe the thing that makes us all human is being able to be like, oh, we're able to empathize with other humans. And I think I really appreciated that it showed both sides of of this dynamic where Shoya at some point is definitely like, you don't understand me at all. Like nobody understands me. Like I'm a I'm a lone wolf type boy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then you get the aggressiveness of like this is where I think Miki, like the purpose of Miki, is Miki then tries to be like, Shoko and I, we're just so similar. Like look at our similarities. And I'm like you're not similar at all. Like get out of here. <laughs> you know? yeah. We we're all good. See, we're the only good ones. No. No. Like what? It was just like your pain is not at all the same. And I think it's this manga is so good at showing how both of those like extremes, like There's that binary yeah. is so BS, like both from a like you're not at all the same and nobody can understand you. And actually 
this aggressive like sympathizing over here is like no you're never gonna be exactly the same as anybody and to say that you understand Shogo's pain when she's like so severely disabled and dealt with this aggressive bullying that you she's literally never experienced because again I mean you can question whether like her classmates are bullying her even if they don't say things to her face like I think that's a valid question to ask but in general they don't actually like seem to say anything to her face so I'm like just catty stuff but it's sort of like um it's kind of like just handled like this miki just goes over to satoshi says i'm being bullied and then satoshi's like i'll t- i'll deal with it who is it and then miki's like this person and that's it that's, that's it. all we see of it <laughs> instead of like actual stuff like um dirt being put into shoes um being told that you should die on your desk and lots of terrible stuff that happened in elementary school there's a big difference i know and again the only thing that i remember her interpreting as bullying was her looking at somebody else's phone yeah and the, and them just saying that she was creepy yeah but it's like okay they didn't even mean for you to say that miki <laughs> like to see it at all you know like it wasn't meant for her eyes and it's like oh we all talk about each other behind people's backs you know which is like not great i'm not i'm not justifying that but there's like it's a difference you know <laughs> they're not the same it's not as direct with the bullying yeah and and I I'm, I'm not sure if it would count as bullying if it's just like um unless it's kind of like on a e bullying kind of thing like where they just have a whole like message board and saying yeah hey, this that's person is saying. terrible it's not like that it was just text messages to each other it's like it's like a much grayer area to me and I'm just like Miki you suck I hate you <laughs> okay so normally I do do a shipping corner but that feels inappropriate for this manga but I do want to mention you know. Shoko and Shoya as a couple. Do you like them? Do you get it? Do you think it's good? I'm not sure if they should get married, but they should date at the very minimum. <laughs> yeah, they should explore whether <laughs> this is a thing that they, they like. I, I think the ship has sailed beyond for Naoka and Shoya. I don't think they they are oh, going to be no. all right because cause Shoya changed too much. And um, Naoka's all like, come on, be like what you used to be. And then Shoya just, just changed and grew up and Naoka didn't. That's all there is to it. And um, uh, there aren't too many other pairings. Um, Satoshi and Miki. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Satoshi's Just too no. good for her. Like, get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> That's how I feel. No, but yeah, I, I guess, okay. The thing with Shoko and Naoka and Shoya from a gender perspective, too, was that, like, I think partially Noka thinks she's cool because, she, you know, like, Shoya in the beginning does have this whole thing where he's, like, girls are just weird and boring. Like, he doesn't understand anybody who's, like, not Kazuki or Keisuke, basically, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, but Naoka is, like, you know, very tomboyish and everything. So he's like, oh, mm-hmm. like, Naoka is the cool girl. And I'm just like, no, but he doesn't actually want that because cool girls are just also blah <laughs> like like gender is blah all of it is blah <laughs> oh just blah it's just like it was just a just a classmate that you hung that he hung out with that's it that's all he perceived it as instead of something romantic oh yeah no he does not want to kiss her at all even when yeah. she crawls into his bed he's like no get out of here <laughs> yeah. so it probably would sting to see like oh i giving the little cat purse that says I have always liked you. And then, she, then he just gives it to Sh- Shoko. <laughs> I know. Oh that God. would sting, though. That would sting a lot. <laughs> I know. She, well, she should have been more direct with her feelings, you know? She, yeah. was trying to be, she was trying to be coy. That never works. Don't be coy. Don't be coy. <laughs> Tomohiro was there. It all went, it all went awry, you know? It's, it went that, that, really awry. Real awry, real fast. Don't do it. <laughs> my true, my one, my one true pairing from this is actually I ship Miyoko and Naoka. <laughs> I actually like their relationship quite a bit. Even though Naoka's just her blunt self, Miyoko just takes in stride and says, Hey, you can talk be blunt as much as you want because we appreciate your frankness and candidness. But it's sort of like Miyoko is also the person who would be able to reel her back and say, Hey, you're actually hurting someone this way. Don't do that. Even though Naoka pushed her over and broke her heels. Or uh, the heels of her shoes, not her actual she- heels. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I knew what you meant. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of hurting in this series. I know. You're like, it could have been actual heels, though. <laughs> like, 
actual bones in her body. Yeah, it could have been. Uh, <laughs> they were bullying each other, but they could grow. They actually grew from the relationship. Surprisingly enough, it's kind of like they they Naoko bullied Miyoko, but they actually learned to appreciate each other at the end of the day. And I'm like, you know what? See that. See, it can work. You can heal. It can work. Yeah. And the, it's weird. It's kind of weird how it's sort of like there's this whole series about um, show you show the shows show your show yo show shows show bro yo yo's yeah <laughs> they should have bro yo <laughs> they probably did have bro yo at the amusement park but anyways, it's sort of like then you have these two who all who were who did manage to heal at the end of the day. So it's sort of like yeah, you guys can heal. It's all right. You guys heal already. You don't need to hurt yourselves. Go to therapy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's the end of this manga. The end Just of go this. to therapy. Yeah. The conclusion of this is go to therapy, everybody. <laughs> yeah, no, Miyoko and uh, Naoko push each other in their, like, career things, too. So I'm into it, you know? It's yeah, good. I like their, their relationship. Also, I mean, Miyoko I gave Naoko a ring. So, I mean, they're getting married. That's all I'm saying. Oh, my God. You're right. Oh, my gosh. I should have perceived it. I thought that it was... I at first thought, thought it was sort of like, yeah, Naoko's are like, yeah, I'm trying to make you jealous. But then it's like, nope, Miyoko gave Naoko the ring. So that means, yeah. <gasps> ooh. ooh. They're definitely a thing. Yeah. Also, Miyoko is very pretty. And when she was dressed up real badass for that modeling show, I was like, yeah, that's hot. I'm into it. <laughs> like... So basically, I want Miyoko to be a really hot model doing Naoko, like showing off Naoko's creations. And they're secretly banging each other. <laughs> like, <laughs> where's that? Where's that series? Yeah, where's that series? That's what How I they healed. I, yeah, they healed. They, they, and there would be a story there because it's sort of like they 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 had a small anecdote about how much they healed. But the thing is that they prop they got to know each other a lot more than the others. They both went to Tokyo together. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not to diminish the rest of the series, but like I'm into it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, anyway, the the real conclusion is go to therapy, everybody. Go to therapy. If you can't afford it, go to therapy. Uh, look at all the people around you and assume that they are redeemable characters in the grand scheme of life. Yeah. Unless they've like murdered somebody, then don't. Yeah, that's, then don't. That's, that's really hard to take back. That's hard to take back. <laughs> that one's hard to take back. You know, there are limits here. There are bullying limits. Is, Do uh, the responsible thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, we can't condemn everybody for doing one wrong thing, but you know, like a severely wrong thing, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I know that everyone has been stupid as kids. So, but the thing is that, can we really move on? I think so. I think, I think we can so. move on. Yeah. It might be harder. For cer certain people and certain, it's a case by case thing, but I think we can move on. We've done stupid things. They've done stupid things. As long as it's kind of like, they just keep trying, try everything. <laughs> yeah. As I've mentioned in other podcasts, I don't casually hit people anymore. Like I'm a, I'm a better person now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't, I don't hit my siblings. I don't say bad words or I do say bad words, but not the really bad words anymore. <laughs> not directed to people like yeah no <laughs> in harmful ways yeah you know we're all good now so forgive your childhood transgressions the only way we'll get better as a society <laughs> we can grow yeah okay <laughs> so thanks for listening to shoujo and tell comments questions constructive criticism concerns you need to tell us your favorite and least favorite character from this series Email shoujoandtell at gmail.com or leave a comment on shoujoandtell.com slash a silent voice. We're at shoujoandtell on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Uh, Kimlin, where can people find you and your work on the internet? You can find me on Twitter at Kimlin Tran. Don't forget the silent H in my name. <laughs> and the H goes after the N. And um, I'm also on um, Twitch, streaming video games, and everything in between. And um, that Twitch is Kanilmik, just my first name backwards you can't miss it that you will be <laughs> <laughs> i thought i was a clever child when i was in fourth grade <laughs> so and um as for uh i think my facebook um is uh, also hanilmic let me All check right. yes it is also hanilmic <laughs> i'm like i can google it and <laughs> be a creepy stalker <laughs> yay <laughs> yay <laughs> Uh, are you excited every time you listen to a new episode from us? If so, please consider leaving a rating in iTunes or Stitcher. This will help the podcast reach more hearts, or at least ears. Thanks again for listening, as always. 
we'll be back next time for Wish by Clamp. I'll be doing that with Asher, my get through all of Clamp buddy, because there are still a million Clamp series to go before the epic shonen exception of Suasa Reservoir Chronicle. We're gonna get there someday. <laughs> Stay tuned until the next episode. Bye. Do you want to say bye, Kimberly? Oh. Yes. Bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> <laughs>